Today is just one of those days where AirDrop simply will not work correctly. And you know exactly what I mean, right? You're just moving along, doing your regular daily work, trying to move a file from one device to another. And for unknown reasons, it just stops working and there's nothing you can do. Luckily, there is an alternative out there. Look at this AirDrop issue from earlier today. All I wanted to do was move a folder from my Mac to my iPhone using AirDrop. So of course I share the folder and I click on the AirDrop and then I click on my iPhone and nothing happens. It just sits there like I'm the idiot, like I'm the one not pushing the buttons correctly. And no matter how many times I click it and re-click it, it just doesn't do anything. Oh, but look, now it sees my iPad so I can go ahead and click my iPad and it goes right on over there. Why? No idea. And you can try all kinds of things trying to get AirDrop to work again. You can turn Wi-Fi on and off and Bluetooth on and off. You can go in airplane mode and then back out of airplane mode. You could do the same thing on the Mac or you could reboot the Mac or you could reboot your phone or you could reboot both and maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't after that. You just have no idea. And if it was just AirDrop, that would be bad enough, but it's not just AirDrop. It's all of Apple's continuity services. It's universal clipboard trying to copy and paste between devices. It's universal control using the same mouse and keyboard between a Mac and an iPad. It's handoff where you move from one device to another using the same application like mail or messages. And it's sidecar. Sometimes sidecar just will not connect either with a Mac and an iPad or even a Mac and a Vision Pro. It just suddenly doesn't work. Luckily, I have found a solution to my AirDrop woes, and that is Blip. Blip is a new application available for iPad and iPhone and Mac and Android, and there's even a Windows client coming soon as well. And I've been using Blip over the last couple of months, and it is by far way more reliable and faster than AirDrop has ever been for me. To set up a Blip account, all you need to do is sign in with your email address and they will send you a code and then you are logged in. Once you sign in, you should go ahead and enable notifications on your device so that when you try and send yourself a file, if you don't have the Blip application open, it will actually go ahead and send you a notification to open the application and then transfer the file over. And here it's asking, where do you wanna save photos? So if you send photos and videos or accept photos and videos to an iPad or an iPhone, it will save it to the Photos app unless you wanna save it somewhere else. So we'll save Photos app because that is fine. We'll give it access to Photos and done. So here we go. So right here, you can see that I have my devices in here right now. So I have my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I have my MacBook Pro, which is this guy right here. And I have this Jerry Inquiries account, which is not what I'm signed into right now. It is actually another account because yes, like AirDrop, you can actually send files to another person as well. Now, when I say Blip is more reliable, look at this. I'm trying to send a photo a single photo from my iPhone to my MacBook using AirDrop. And it just sits there saying waiting and pulsing and waiting and waiting, and it doesn't do anything. So I will cancel that and I'll go ahead and select Blip and transfer it over to my Mac and instantly it is over there. On the Mac side with Blip installed, you do get this menu bar icon up at the top. And again, you can see your devices. So I can say my iPad Air, I wanna send a device to it. I can drag and drop a device or a uh, file over to here. I can also go into the settings of Blip and I have a couple of options as well. So here I can say, where do I wanna save files that I receive on my Mac? So I can change that from the downloads or desktop to somewhere else. Do I wanna auto accept files from my other devices? Yes, I do. And do I wanna launch it login? Yes, I do as well. Over here, you can see a list of all of your devices on your account and some support options as well. So let's do an example right here. We'll select a number of files that I have here on my iPad and I wanna send them to my MacBook Pro. We'll start with AirDrop just to see how that goes. So we'll click AirDrop and we'll tap on my MacBook Pro right there and we'll see how long that takes. And that wasn't too bad. It only took a few seconds and it showed up on my Mac. So great, it actually worked that time. That's nice. And now we'll do the same thing with Blip. So same files are selected. We'll tap on Blip. We'll tap on the 14 inch MacBook Pro and you can see Wow, that was fast. And I don't know if you saw it, but there's a nice little transfer window thing that pops up at the bottom during a transfer. So let me show you a larger file. So here I'm going to select a 467 megabyte file, click on share, and then click on blip, and then the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And you can see at the bottom, there's a progress bar that shows you exactly how fast and how far along you are on the transfer, which is really nice to actually have some feedback of how the file transfer is going. 
and that transferred really fast, almost 300 megabits per second. Next, I wanna show you how you can transfer files even when you're not on Wi-Fi and transfer files to other people. But first, I wanna thank today's sponsor, CalDigit, who you know for making great Thunderbolt docks like the Thunderbolt Station 4. The TS4 is a Thunderbolt 4 dock with 18 ports of connectivity that is backwards compatible with Thunderbolt 3, USB-C, and more. There are a ton of great features with the TS4, including compatibility with up to dual 6K displays with your Mac, but it also looks great, especially with that rear-facing host port. Other docks on the market have a host connection port on the front of the dock. This leads to a messy setup that's hard to keep neat. You can run the cable in different directions or try to coil it, but cable management will be an issue. The rear Thunderbolt host port on the TS4 is a more elegant solution and allows you to run the cable from the dock to your laptop from behind for a much cleaner setup. So if you wanna clean up your workspace while adding 18 ports of connectivity, check out the TS4 today using the links below. And my thanks to channel partner CalDigit for sponsoring this video. All right, so now let's say we wanna transfer a large file, but we don't necessarily wanna stick around this computer, we wanna walk away, whatever. We can actually continue transferring the file off of Wi-Fi. So for example, I'll just try and transfer this file right here over to my MacBook. So I'll click on share, click on blip, and I will tap the MacBook and the transfer will start, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi like I'm walking away. So what's gonna happen is we're going to stop the transfer temporarily while it sits there and it reconnects. So you see right now it's showing that we are offline, but give it just a second to connect to LTE or 5G or whatever you have and the transfer will resume. And now you can see at the bottom that it is now reconnecting and the transfer is now continuing along just like it was. Of course, it's going to be probably slower than your Wi-Fi connection but the transfer will continue. And I don't have great connection over here, so we'll just go ahead and turn Wi-Fi back on so that the transfer can complete. And like I said, you can actually transfer files to somebody else who has blip as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. We'll select a file, tap on share, tap on blip. And here we can actually just go ahead and type in the email address of somebody else that you know that has blip that's expecting a file from you. So if I type in Tom something, some addresses might come up kind of obscured. That's probably not great security wise, but you know, whatever. I have already sent a file to my other account, inquiries for jerry at gmail.com. And that is actually what I'm assigned into with this Android phone right here. So once I go ahead and tap on here, I should get a notification on the Android phone that I want to send it a file. And then I have the option to accept it or reject it. So I'll tap on that account. And right now, look at that. I get a notification and I want to accept. And inside the Blip app, you can see that the file is actually transferring over from the iPad. And we're going at about 200 megabits per second or so, which is pretty quick. Now these transfers are fully encrypted in transit. So security probably isn't an issue. I'm not gonna vouch for that 100%, but I don't have any concerns the way that I'm using it right now today. And with files that are received inside the Blip app, you can then tap on it to do whatever, share it, send it to photos or whatever else that you need to do there. So why would you wanna use Blip instead of anything else that's out there? Well, it's obvious why you might wanna use it instead of AirDrop because AirDrop sometimes is a maddening POS that just does not wanna work and there's no way that you can actually fix it. You just wait and sometimes spontaneously it will start working again. Another option is to use something like iCloud Drive or Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever else for cloud storage. That's good, that works too, except you have to upload it and then you have to download it. This is a direct transfer. This is device to device transfer. There's no intermediate storage that's being used between the two devices. It is directly from device to device, which can make it quicker than uploading and then downloading. Also, there's no size limits. You can send any size file that you want. It could be 99 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as the two devices are online, they can transfer the file. It even works with Final Cut Pro packages or Apple Photos packages or any other package thing inside Mac OS that sometimes doesn't necessarily play well with online storage solutions. And I know that was a lot of information, so sorry about that. I was pretty revved up when I started recording because I was pretty angry about AirDrop. Now, I still use AirDrop and I'm still going to default to AirDrop most of the time, just out of probably muscle memory or reflex at this point. But the second I start having issues, I instantly go to blip and it just works. So I can definitely see over time my muscle memory changing to something that actually works when I expect it to. It's really common for me wanting to take a picture of something and then quickly send it over to my Mac without waiting for Apple Photos or anything like that. So I'll tap on share and AirDrop will fail a lot of times. So I can just tap on blip and it goes fast and it works every single time I try it. I don't have any issues. 
It has been incredibly reliable and you should probably check it out because it's still free. But what do you guys think? Does this look like a tool that might work for you? And what kind of issues are you having with AirDrop and continuity and all that other stuff? Let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna see what it's like to work from the Apple Vision Pro, check out this video right over here. That one. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.